Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you for dropping by for yet another chess video. Psh, wait, what am I doing looking at my wrist? I don't even have a watch. But always when I look at the time, I have to look at the clock. Anyway, so it's 1.14 right now and at two o'clock I have to wake up my son and go pick up our daughter from school. So that means I've got what, about 46 minutes tops. Anyways, I wanted to sit down and share something pretty cool with you guys. So I'm gonna backtrack and say that ever since I did that chestnut video comparison to the square, the square off, board where if you guys watch the video to its full extent you notice that i was talking about uh, the feature that i really would want to see in some of these futuristic boards and mainly that would be the feature of having some kind of a tutor uh okay so like have a, a nice intelligent super futuristic board that literally has an entire research team designed to be able to provide you with a very comprehensive tutoring option to where you know you switch the you know the knob on tutor and it will follow through with a, a normal voice and it will like teach you whether or not you should move this piece whether or not you should move this piece i do understand this is a lot of research and development to go over every single little nuance but i feel like if something like that were introduced in some of these boards it would be pretty cool. I mean, let's let's agree that if you could have a very comprehensive tutor embedded into one of these boards, it would be pretty awesome. So it's ever since I had the discussion, I've had some people comment about that particular topic and I thought it got, it got me interested. So I started looking online for any type of boards that would have some kind of a tutoring program or something built into them. Um, not a whole lot. I mean, I'm still looking and if you guys know of these type of features available on some of the boards please don't hesitate leave me a comment below let me know anyways i was on house of staunton the other day uh, and i was browsing their chess computer section so something like this caught my eye it's the karpov chess school learn chess easily okay uh really cool i think this retailed for about 89 dollars or something like that they were still running that 20% off summer sale. Now I think they're running at 10%. But if you kind of wait around a little bit, maybe towards uh, Christmas or so, I'm sure their their sale numbers are going to like the percentage is going to change from maybe 10 to 15 or maybe even 20. 20 is pretty much as high as I've seen. So I picked this board up at a you know at a discount that it allowed me to to take off those those percentages because I was interested to see what this is all about. In the description of House of Staunton, basically it says that you have the opportunity with this product to learn chess easily, as it says on the box here, with the help of Anatoly Karpov, which as I'm sure you guys know, Anatoly Karpov who used to be the world champion at some point, and he, I mean, great guy. I have nothing but good things to say about him, but, Basically, here's here's some of the things that that sort of caught my eye and 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 basically sort of pushed me to purchase this product. Check this out: speech output. So this board not only teaches you how to play chess, there's speech output. There's Anatoly Karpov's picture here, so I'm I trust the guy. So anything with his picture on the box, I'm already going to be biased towards potentially buying it. Um, let's see, compartment for pieces. Okay, cool. 100 interactive exercises and um, play and learn with world champion Anatoly Karpov. Okay, um, this little product here caught my eye. It wasn't very expensive. Like I said, it was a, probably all all in all maybe it cost me like 70 bucks with the discounts, maybe even like 60 something. Um, and so I, I picked it up. This particular product, I was super excited about it. Um, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you guys a link below if you want to look into this or buying this for somebody, uh, please be sure to follow the link below. And, uh, you know, if, if you're looking to get one, be sure to pick yourself up one. Inside the box, everything's compartmentalized. You get a bunch of stuff, okay? A bunch of paperwork, okay? So we have the user manual that comes in in this particular box so and, and i took time to, to kind of learn this and uh this is really important especially once you're starting out go through this so that you know you're you're well versed in how to operate the board 
Okay, setting this aside, you also have a little, a little pamphlet here, a multi-language pamphlet that basically says that, that uh, instructions in different languages could be obtained at uh, computerchess.com is where you can go to to get the instructions if you if you're not satisfied with the instructions that are provided maybe you don't speak that particular language so little guarantee card which is in German I don't know if the, if the English guarantee card is but here it's basically you write your name and everything some kind of a warranty a warranty on the product and then you get this relatively thick book let's see how many pages like 80 87 88 pages and this book is the chess school the Karpov chess school rules of the game is the first uh, chapter the setting up of the chess pieces the movement of the chess pieces the understanding of the board notation you know the very fundamentals of what's basically introducing us into what chess is all about winning the game how to checkmate the king um, the value system of the of the pieces yeah checkmate in your king is chapter two strategic formation openings you get a bunch of exercises so this book is kind of valuable you would have to go through the book you'd have to learn stuff so i feel like this is this is really really cool this is the actual board up here i'm gonna just show you guys the, the board closely Okay, so I was just actually reading uh, before I started this video about uh, the burn burn in um, problem of some of the TVs out there. The burn in problem is if, if the video stays too static and in one spot that you could have like some kind of burn in damage on the on the TV. So I do realize I don't switch my camera angles all that often. So if you do have like an OLED TV and by now my face has burned into like permanently into your TV. I do apologize for that because like I said, I don't really move a lot on, on my images. Here's the actual board, okay? And uh, let's take a look at the at the physical characteristics of the board. Uh, I'm gonna flip it to the back side to show you guys what's going on over here. On the back side, you have the battery compartment right over here. It does take three AA batteries. They do not recommend rechargeable batteries. I am not really sure why as I'm sure a lot of people would prefer to use rechargeable batteries, but like I said, they don't recommend it. Um, right here on the side, it does have a little AC uh, port for you to put in an AC adapter, but I didn't, I, I was, I checked the box and I don't think I got an AC adapter or anything inside. So all I got is just the product that you guys seen with all the manuals and stuff. Now maybe I have to pick up like a se separate adapter. I really wish they use a, they would have done a rechargeable option because a lot of people nowadays they just expect to have some kind of an internal battery with maybe like a USB-C port here. That would have been so much easier. So that way you don't have to like, but the good thing about the batteries is that like, for example, a lot of people just have batteries laying around. And then if you're, if you're out somewhere where you're not able to charge it and you do have, um, you know, access to a bunch of AA batteries, so that's always good. I guess you could always swap. You don't have to wait for things to charge. And then you have this little compartment right over here, which has actually two compartments here that hold your pieces. As you could see right over here, the pieces are gonna be relatively light. They're light plastic pieces. In fact, they're kind of light and they're they're really not really hard to lose. I was I was playing the game in my car and like during the time that I played two games in my car, uh, three of my pieces end up falling uh, behind like in between the seat and the and the console. So and and they're kind of hard to find too because they're just they are magnetized as as you could see right over here. Pieces are like sticking to each other. So on the on the bottom of each piece, there's like a little magnet embedded in the bottom. That does help the pieces kind of stay on the board a little bit better, which I I found really nice because the board isn't, there's not a lot of traction on the board itself, but the pieces do magnetize to the board uh, so that you could have a little bit of an angle when you're playing and you could still get away with it. You can't put it like mm, vertically, like some of the travel chess sets that we've seen, you can literally flip it upside down and stuff and you'll still be okay. 
you can't do it with this. But um, you get you get two compartments. I'm guessing one for the what what I, I think you can you can really just put all the pieces in one compartment. So eh, I think one of the pieces like the pieces get in here in between when you're closing it. So it it's kind of a little tricky. Here we go. All closed. On the bottom here, also you have these little rubberized uh, little legs, four of them, so that way the board doesn't move around if you're sitting this board on like a smooth surface, which is kind of standard with a lot of appliances. Um, so we flip this over. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of flip it your way, right over here. And you have a little screen over here. Sorry, there's a little bit of dust. I was eating chips in the car yesterday with my son when I was trying this out. Um, you have a little screen right over here and then you have a bunch of buttons and the way that it works is once you put the batteries in you turn this on and it makes a sound the sound that you heard can be adjusted in the options i'm going to show you guys this up close and kind of run you through some of the options and how this works but basically you get a little screen here and this allows you to utilize this screen the screen will set up a, a different types of positions in case you're doing any of the puzzle exercises that are embedded into the software or if you're playing a game you can just follow where the pieces go based on this little screen and then you can also use the this top of the board with uh, the way that, that the top of the board works okay is you set up your pieces it does not have piece recognition okay um meaning the pieces are just set up and and the board trusts that you have the pieces there um, the way that you would move a piece is you would actually, so right now it's going to make this weird sound, but you actually depress the square very lightly with the piece. It's not like really hard, like we've seen in the uh, square off kingdom set to where you had to physically depress it, but barely, barely put a little bit of pressure and it'll make this sound here because the game has not started yet. It's making that sound. When you actually start the game, it'll go beep. And then you go peep, and then you take it, first you take a piece, you, you punch the square on which the piece was, then you move the piece to the desired square. If you're capturing, for example, in the middle of the, or like in the beginning, and your pawn is here and the opponent's pawn is here, you click your pawn here, then you remove the opponent's pawn and then you can click it here, and, and then the software just realizes that you've taken, you've captured a piece, okay? So these are sort of the, the very basic nuances. In this little software, you get the option of doing a new game. You can do blitz. Uh, you can do rated uh, at different time intervals. It allows you to do like a five minute, a 10, I believe, a couple of different ones. Um, and then you can also do some of the exercises that are provided here. You can play a couple of different games that I did not recognize. I mean, they were chess, but they were like, you can, you can play an entire game with just like a few pieces. And I, I'm not really sure why they're doing that, but that's, that's what's going on. Also in the options, you have, you have the, the opportunity to select like different tutoring modes. And uh, the way that there's different tutoring modes work is that like sometimes in the tutoring mode, you're allowed to like take a piece back. If it, if it feels like you're, the, the move that you made isn't really the best move that could have been made. So it'll say, are you sure? So there will be actually a voice and I'll show you guys here in a second that'll say, are you sure? And then you click this Y button right over here. Um, and it'll say, because, you know, in this move, you could have otherwise taken a pawn. Then you'll say why, and they'll say, like, your knight could have taken the pawn on, you know, b7. And then you, could, you can have the option of, of clicking forward or back. If you click back, it'll allow you to take your piece back to the original position and make another move. Okay, so I guess that's kind of cool. And I'll show you how, I'll demonstrate here in a second how, how, how it works. But um, that's about it. You play a game. This particular board is actually rated at like ELO 14 plus and a United States Chess Federation rating of 16 plus. So don't know why there's this discrepancy, but there is. And basically, supposedly it's 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 you playing against Anatoly Karpov 
Okay. So right off the bat, there's some things that I do like and some things that I don't like, and I'm gonna just kind of tell you guys as as, as openly and honestly as I can um, some of the opinions that I have for, formed while using this board, while playing this board. So the, the first thing that I do like about this board is, uh, well, batteries. Batteries is a good thing. You know, it's a good and it's a bad thing. If you have the ability to put in uh, AAA, batter uh, AA batteries in here, then that's nice because, well, as long as you have batteries, you'll be okay. Um, and if your, you know, device like battery runs out, you can always pick up extra batteries or keep them with you. So that way, you know, you don't get caught by surprise. I mean, how many times have I taken the camera out and forgot, oh man, I forgot to charge the battery or something. And then you can't just swap a new battery unless you have a new battery. So if like some of the older cameras just used to use AA batteries, you can just, I don't know, go to the kiosk next door and, and buy batteries while you're traveling, just pop them in and that's always convenient. Uh, so it's a good and a bad thing, uh, but it is what it is. Um, Another nice thing about this particular board is that like uh, you, you, you're not connecting to your phone, which means that you don't necessarily have to have a phone around. You're not connecting to any type of Wi-Fi. You literally can be like Robinson Crusoe or Crusoe on a, on, a, on a deserted island, just as long as you have like an endless supply of AA batteries. Uh, you could probably enjoy this board for what it is, for what it was intended, and you could, you know, play on your island chess with the computer so that's that's always nice okay um it's a very it's a very autonomous board it doesn't really need anything else to function the way it's meant to be functioning okay my expectations about this board versus what the board actually is so my expectation when I looked at this is, okay, you have Anatoly Karpov's picture right here, and then it says uh, speech output. Then it says play and learn with the world champion. You have a speech output device that basically talks to you. You have the picture of Anatoly Karpov, and it says learn with Karpov. And then on the description, on the actual link, it'll say you're going to be learning with Karpov. Karpov is going to basically guide you through, like, learning how to play so i thought as soon as i like put in the batteries i would hear anatoly karpov be like welcome you know let me guide you through i don't know maybe my expectations were like through the roof i literally thought every single move anatoly karpov's voice would come up and be like you are playing this way and maybe you should have done this because of this and that and like i thought i was gonna get something that immersive to where you know it would be like really cool um instead what i really got is this book learn chess with anatoly karpov basically has his picture here and just a regular learn how to move your pieces around gives you some you know some some uh puzzles and stuff to go through some some things to think about i mean anatoly karpov's picture is here but honestly like that's about it. That's what I felt like. Maybe I haven't given this device enough testing time, but that's what I felt like, okay? Um, cool, you got the book. If you're willing to go through the book, you're gonna learn some stuff, I'm guess, especially if you're like a very beginner. Um, this board itself has like some automated voice that sounds like a computer and it goes like, are you sure? And, and I'll, I'll let you guys hear it for yourself. And uh, it really does sound very computerized. And they're like, are, are you sure? And then you click Y and then it's like, you are uh, missing a, a, a move which could have resulted you capturing one pawn. And, and, and there was a point at which I was playing this and I literally was like, okay, uh, the, I was playing normal and I really didn't feel like this was that strong uh, like of an opponent here because I was ready to to give a fork. It's still turned on. I was ready to give a fork between a king and a rook and the opponent's piece was protecting that. I think the opponent's queen was sitting uh, right in front of the king and they were black and uh, the only thing that prevented me basically from, from, from doing the fork was the queen so i took the queen 
and when I when I took the queen uh, suddenly the computer was like are you sure and I said yeah I'm sure well I know what I'm doing I'm taking I'm, I'm, elim I'm el eliminating the only piece that's protecting the pawn that will allow me to fork the king to the rook and the computer was like are you sure and I was like why and they were like you could have taken a pawn and I was like a what so I clicked Y again and then they were like you could have taken the pawn on you know the square and I thought to myself no I couldn't because then I would have lost a knight because the opponent's king queen could have just taken it so that was like a little bit weird uh, there are different ways like different settings that you can set here for like normal play uh, passive very passive active and aggressive so I'm assuming that changes the difficulty of the opponent I played normal and I thought that that was just not very strong at all like I ended up winning with a clear advantage I mean midway through the game I was up a whole rook and then basically like just cornered the the king at the very end like I didn't feel that even though I was up material that the the opponent was still very much so willing to liquidate pieces and when the when you're down material the last thing you want to do is liquidate pieces because even if you're uh you know even if you're down like a pawn by liquidating the pieces that one point difference becomes more and more significant towards the end of the game as we all know but uh yeah the the literally like blundered an entire rook and I was up like five points and they were like, yeah, I want to liquidate, whatever, let's liquidate. So maybe once you change the settings and like I said, I haven't played this extensively and I will play this more because I do spend a lot of time waiting for my daughter to get off of school. So this will allow me to test it out a little bit more. And hopefully maybe if I can do another video where I can tell you guys a little bit more like after say using this for a couple of months, I'll be like, okay, now so much better or whatever. But so far, first impressions are like, ooh, I don't hear Antali Karpov. I really wish that this would have like, not computerized voice, but an actual like live voice with much more descriptive like, I don't know. I, I felt like every move should have its own description. I know I'm asking a lot, but it, that would be nice. Like, I, it won't, like it'll allow you to press Y but it'll make that sound. So the only, so the, the, the why basically like when you're playing the game and if you hear the voice saying like, are you sure or caution, then you can press Y. Otherwise, like if the opponent makes a certain move, you, I was assuming that something like this, you could press Y any point of the game and then you could get a, some kind of a description like, oh, move the pawn from, you know, C, uh, C7 to C6 or whatever and open up that particular like pathway. If you could ask why, I was hoping they would say, oh, well, opening up that pawn would allow some of my pieces to the freedom to come out and doing this or I am building up the center or whatever. Like that is what I was really hoping to get a very comprehensive like every move description type of thing. In fact, I think that is totally possible. If we can get some of the grandmasters out there, like even some of the other masters, like they don't have to be grandmasters. Just get somebody to like literally record themselves explaining every particular move. I know there's a lot of different moves, but you can literally have somebody sit down and record on like Levi or something or Hikaru, somebody who likes to talk a lot um, and literally like record themselves uh, with every single particular variation of every position and do as much recording like hundreds of hours of recording take all that and throw it in here so that way every time you do move forward you could ask why and you could get like I don't know you could get a Gotham chess guy who would explain to you without you know without cursing at you or anything or without without you know just sounding really nice and appreciative being like oh by doing that you're going to have the following advantages or whatever like with every i know it's a lot to ask for because there's so many variations in chess to to go through but hundreds of hours maybe small descriptions for every move would have been really cool
but it's not the case here. The only time that this board talks to you is if it feels like you are making a blunder or you're making a mistake uh, or you just left a, like a piece that's just a piece hanging. If you leave a piece hanging, it'll say caution. And then you'll say why and it'll say like, you are about to lose a piece worth three points. And then you'll say why and it'll say like, my queen at so-and-so will take your bishop at so-and-so. Are you sure you want to proceed? So that's kind of cool, but I don't know. I expected more out of this board, to be honest with you. Um, I find that the, the, the advantages of this board, the fact that it's small and very light, um, the, the fact that it's, you know, you can carry it anywhere. Uh, pieces are kind of on the small side but they're still manageable. They're not like the, the little microscopic chess set that I showed you guys, but it's it's playable. You don't need tweezers for this particular chess set, but, uh, but you know, it's, you still have to be careful because like I said, I was playing the game in the car and there were a couple of times where I misplaced the pieces and they fell in between the seats. So then I had to get them afterwards. But uh, let me show you up close a little bit about how kind of how it works so you guys can get a better idea. Okay, so here's uh, some of the buttons here and I hope that it's gonna be in focus, but here's the off on button. Um, and then right over here, you have the start button. And when you click the start button, you'll have a little thing that says here, new game. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it'll, it'll be in focus, but there's a chance that it may not. Uh, you have a new game option right over here, or you can click down and it'll say setup. You can set up a position rating options if you click on options right over here you have the option to change the sound so it, you know you can you can change where so it doesn't like beep this is zero beeps this is uh, the highest that the beeps kind of annoying but it is there and that way you know you're not lost whether or not you're supposed to be moving or not so then you have style this is what i was talking about you have the aggressive style the active style, normal, passive, and very passive. So you can choose whatever style suits you best. This is contrast. So contrast will allow your pieces to be a little bit more visible, especially in situations where there's a lot of bright light. It goes from one to eight. If you go to eight, everything kind of just very gets very contrasty. So I would probably recommend keeping it in the middle. If you have a higher contrast option, then it'll probably suck up your batteries quicker. But that's that. You have language. Language will allow you to select between English and uh, Deutsch. So because uh, yeah, it'll and I think it'll speak in German too. Yeah, you have English and Deutsch. I wish it had other languages. But here we go. We have we have English language tutor tutor options. They have one zero or two. One, two, or zero, two, zero being, I guess, no tutor, and then one and two will basically allow you to either take pieces back, take movements back or not. So that's kind of good to see. And then we'll go back to sounds. Um, you also have the uh, invert board, level, fun, fun level, one, two, three, no limit. So there's a lot of different adjustments that you can do on this. Like I said, I haven't yet fully learned. You have, here we go, you have the new game. New game will be like a regular chess game. Um, you also have the option of doing other ones. I'll show you in a second, normal. And then you basically start the game. So you get the pieces all set up right over here when you play a normal one. And um, you set up all the pieces up here, okay? The way that it works is basically you take a piece up. It does not recognize the positioning of the pieces. It doesn't sense them like the chestnut air um, on, on the board itself. But what you do is you basically, you pick up a piece, you click it. Then it'll start, um, it'll highlight, it'll blink over here. And then you know that you picked up that piece and then you'll hit it here. And then the opponent um, tells you that they um, are doing this movement. So although I don't have the pieces up here, um, all I'm doing is I'm basically I'm showing you guys that this can be played without the actual pieces. If for some reason you didn't want to take the pieces out, uh, you can just follow this board, click and go from there, for example. So 
that's that. Um, let me show you another option. So while we're playing this, I'm going to show you where, where, where it'll say like, are you sure? So let's do this. Did you guys hear that? It said, are you sure? So then you click Y. I can safely take that piece. I can safely take that piece. You click Y again. My knight on D6 could take your horn on D4. Does that sound like Karpov to you guys? And if you click proceed, you can click up. Then it'll just make the move. It'll just make the move. So now it made the move. Um... Let's make another, let's, let's, like I said, that that's the only things, for example, here, his knight took my pawn, okay, now, I take out my knight over here, watch this, he's gonna, I guess, what's he gonna do, is he gonna take my, check. okay, so he decided to give me a check, he decided to, E7 to E5. So for example, let's say I make a blow. Are you sure? I can safely take that piece. My king on E8 could take your queen on F7. So that you, let's say for example you don't want him to proceed, you'll click this back button and it'll allow you to basically put the piece back. So if you click forward at that point, that it, he's going to be able to, uh, you know, to to move forward. But basically, that's that's how it works. If you make a blunder, he'll let you know about it. Um, let me quickly show you guys the pieces set up and how everything looks, so that you guys can get a little bit of a better idea. And then I'm going to have to wrap it up because I have six minutes left. So in the back, we have the little pieces. This is what the pieces will look like. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and show you guys how the pieces are. Hopefully my camera's still recording. As you can see, because of the magnetized properties of this board, um, you can you can you can lift the board up like this, and the pieces are still gonna be sort of I mean, you could probably, but no, for me it didn't work. Like some of the pieces don't have as, as good of a as a magnetic pull. As some of the other pieces so um, if you do flip it some of the pieces tend to slide a little bit especially like the heavier pieces like the Kings and stuff because they're a little bit heavier due to their overall shape they're a little bit more likely to but it, it's a nice thing it's a nice thing that they did the magnetized stuff because sometimes you just want to keep this on your lap and if you want to keep it on your lap you don't want the pieces to just run off I really wish that they could have had some kind of a side compartment instead for you to be able to put your pieces especially when you're playing the game you need to have a place to put the pieces when the pieces get taken or you're taking the pieces so that because for me I literally had to put them in the central console of the car while I was playing because I really it was either that or putting them in my pocket you can't readily turn the board over and put them back into that section so it would have been nicer if they had a little side compartment instead that you could open and just you know store your pieces in there but um so that's basically it um the pieces are like i said they're they're kind of small but the fact that they have the the magnetic pull to them is is a nice feature this does remind me some of the magnetic chess sets that i've shown you guys before especially the one where i did it uh in connecticut uh the little magnetic chess set that comes in like a little pouch so this feels very similar, but you know, you do get a little little board here that you can see what's going on and, and, and you get to play a game and you can adjust the ratings. I'll be sure to try to play with this a little bit more and maybe make another video to show you guys like what I think about this. Like I said, I, I think that it would have been nice if we could have Karpov's voice instead of an automated voice on this, but we still get some kind of voice and uh, you know, this might be useful to some people. Well, that's about it. That's all I want to show you guys. I really do have to run because I think I have about like a couple of, yeah, two minutes left. So what do you guys think about this board? I think that, I mean, what was it retailing for about $90 or so? 
who is this board made for is the real question. It's it's made for chess beginners, but in the world where we live, where everybody has a cell phone, a smartphone, where everybody has a computer, and the internet connection is just so ever present everywhere, who is this really aimed for? I think that if I had a board like this when I was growing up, that it would have been really, really awesome because when I was growing up, the only times where I got to play chess was if somebody wanted to play chess with me and that was very, very infrequent. I mean, sometimes my sister would play chess with me. Sometimes, like my parents didn't really play chess with me that much and I played all kinds of other video games. But uh, looking back, if I had a board like this where I had, you know, even if I had a computer like this that could play chess with me, that would have been really nice. I feel like that would have, you know, kind of, uh, you know, jump-started my, my enthusiasm in chess a lot earlier than it did because honestly, as far back as I can remember, it wasn't until high school where my, my you know, zest and enthusiasm for chess started to pick up and only because a really good friend of my Dennis, was a part of the chess club at school and, and was like, hey, do you know how to play chess? And I was like, well, I, yeah, I kind of do. And he was like, why don't you jo join our chess club? And that's basically where I started playing chess. And where I fell in love with it was in high school. So yes, had it been back in like the early 2000s or before and I got something like this, I would have been super thrilled. Now, I don't know. I mean, yes, I do wait in car for a while to pick up my daughter for like an hour and a half every day. So this could be useful because I could play some games, but then again, I could also be sitting here on chess.com and playing live games if I wanted to. So there's that. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, what are your thoughts about this board? What are your thoughts in general about like having a board that will tutor you and how useful is that? Uh, maybe in the future they're going to come up with a lot more futuristic boards so that way you know a lot more people could get into playing chess so but until then we'll just keep reviewing different boards and different chess sets and as always I really do appreciate you guys taking all the time that you take to enjoy and watch my videos I really do appreciate you guys hitting those likes because I know for every like for every 20 views or for every 30 views, somebody might be like, hey, here, hit, have a like, you know, it does make a difference. So if you hit that like and somebody else hits that like, there's a lot more likes so that more people can see videos that I make. So that's always encouraging. And I'll just remain optimistic and I wish you guys a great productive week, uh, weekend, whatever time of day you find this video at. Stay safe, everyone. Enjoy playing chess. Enjoy watching my videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.